Hello everybody, Chris here, and in this video I'm going to show you how to take text and put it behind an object inside of DaVinci Resolve. So this is roughly the end result we're shooting for in this video. Okay, so the general idea of how we do this is by using layer masks and selecting certain areas of the screen. In this case, that would be the tree trunk by color inside of the code tab of DaVinci. And then filtering out everything that's not that, so that only the tree trunk blocks the text, but the rest of the image does not. And in order to do this, uh, I'm actually using two different video tracks that contain exactly the same video clip. So we have the original video clip, which sits in the background and has no changes made to it. And then we have the top clip on video track 3 above video track 2 where the text is actually sitting, where we select the tree trunk in order to block the text, but ignore the rest of the end. So in order to recreate this, I'm going to copy the same video clip over to a different portion inside of video track 1. So in addition to simply masking the tree out and putting the text behind it, we also have the additional challenge that the camera is not staying in place in this shot and it's actually going around the tree. So the tree's position with respect to the camera is going to keep changing. So next I'll take a random text element and put that above this video track. You can generate your own text by going to the effects library, titles, and choose text from here. Select whatever font you want, whatever size you want. And if you want, you can come down here to drop shadow and add in some offset and opacity so that you can actually get a drop shadow behind the text, making it stand out more visually. But as an alternative, you could do a stroke. It's really up to you how you want your text to look. So I'm just going to take this clip from video track 1, copy it, and bring it up to video track 3. So now the clips in track 1 and track 3 are actually the same, but we need to modify the track 3. So to do that, we go into the color tab, and we're going to need to create a layer mask here. So the way I'm doing it, is two components. One is keying out by color, and the second is to have a selective power window so that regardless of which colors we select with the dropper tool, which is the second tab over here, we're going to only condense that down to the tree trunk area. So anywhere else that has a similar color is irrelevant. So to get started, we're going to select the tree trunk space color using the picker tool over on the qualifier tab down here. So you want to pick kind of the average color of the tree trunk, and it's going to immediately try to shift your hue, your saturation, and your luminance to be colors very similar to what you selected. Now, uh, if you go over to the key tab over here, you're going to see essentially what you've grabbed. If you get a result like this where it's kind of all over the place, you might want to try to pick a different color out from your clip. So I'll go over here and try this again, see if we get any better of a result. Okay, so that's actually not too bad. If you compare the image to the key down here, you can see that basically the tree trunk areas are being selected. And this is why it's important to use a power window so that this other tree over here doesn't block your text accidentally. Unless you actually want that to block the text too, but in this case, I just want this tree. But yeah, that's not too bad. Now, in order to add to that to get a larger selection, we can go back to the qualifier tab and use the additional select uh, tool over here. It's the one with the plus sign and the dropper. And we keep clicking on areas where we're going to want to select. So that's going to be basically any other color on the tree trunk. We can add these in until we get a really good selection. And whenever you want to compare, just kind of go back to the key and see how it's been grabbed out. Ideally, you want the full tree trunk shape to show up here. And you don't need to worry too much about accidentally grabbing the bottom here too much in this case because the text is going to sit behind the tree anyway and we're using the power window so this bottom part isn't going to be relevant, just the trees to the side. So with a few more additional clips, if we go and check on the key tab, uh, it looks like we've actually keyed it out pretty well. So the important thing is that the background blue area is completely untouched, um, so that'll make it a lot easier to actually select this with the power window. So now we need to go to the start of this clip and add in our first power window selection. You can use any of these tools down here that you want. Uh, Polygon will be a good tool if you want to create a completely custom shape. Uh, we can probably get away with just using a rectangular shape as well. But I guess we'll do a polygon to try to make it even nicer. That By doing it this way, we can click on empty parts and just add more points in to get some more detail 
in our selection. So because we're working with this preview window now, we're going to want to expand that. So I'm going to click the Maximize button over here and fit the video to our window area. And now we can do the Polygon tool. Now before we actually start editing this, I want to enable the Corrector 1 portion of the keyframes for uh, basically keyframing. And what this will do is as we start changing these points on a different frame, it's going to create automatic animations between each of the values we set on each keyframe. So the keyframes will be automatically created when we have it enabled with the red diamond. So I'm going to go to the first frame and we're going to get a good selection over here. So I'm going to just try to get these points all around the tree as accurately as we can. The more points you add in, the more accurate it's going to be, but also the more complicated it's going to be to manage as we get into later keyframes, because we're going to need to change the position of all those keyframes. We can also zoom in a bit to get a bit of a better idea of exactly where our points are selecting. So now we can go up to a different part of our video and automatically create a new keyframe by dragging these points. So the idea here is just to, at all points in time, have the power window selecting only this tree area. So let's go to a new portion of the video and drag these points once again. The closer we get to the border of the tree, the better the result is going to look. So here we might actually need to add in a couple more keyframes. So I'll do that. And we'll do the next point as well. And finally, we'll go to the end portion. So if everything's gone right and you played with it a little bit, when you play it back, should roughly approximate the shape of the tree trunk or whatever your object is. Okay. So not perfect there from myself, but it's not too bad. And we can at least get started with the text now. So if we go back to the edit tab real quick and we hide the video 3 layer, you'll see that the video 3 layer is blocking the text, obviously, right? So now we need to take the key from this layer. That's basically what you're going to see over here in the node over here in the top right corner. And we need to take the key that's going to be the triangle down here and connect that to the alpha output. Now, if you don't see an alpha output, right click, go to add alpha output. And it should pop up over here with a little blue rectangle box. So connect the key to the alpha output and then connect the circle on the top to the video output. And if you've keyed it out properly in combination with the power window, what you should see is your text appearing behind your object in the sink. So if everything's gone right, we should be done here. So let's play it back one more time. And I can already see that there's a few minor issues there. Okay, so that's not too bad. The basic idea is there. It's just that we need a little bit more adjustment on our power window, particularly at the start. So here we can go back to the power window selection, and I think I just need to bring these points down a bit. So that looks pretty good there. And we can keep going to different points and seeing if everything is going right. So a little bit of an adjustment there. Keep going. Next keyframe. A little bit of an adjustment there and you get the idea here obviously if you don't actually need to make any of these adjustments because your object stays static in the shot it's going to be easier to get it absolutely perfect but it will take more time if you actually have an animated shot okay so one last thing if you do end up with the portion of your image where even though you have the power window selection uh, some of the text is still showing through it's because you need to modify your key and add a bit more selection to it so over on the qualifier, we're going to use the add tool one more time and just add the areas where you see text showing above. So if I add this a few times and over here, you should be able to get your selection good so that the text does not show over the tree. And if you still have issues after that, it's because you need to adjust your power window selection. So let's go ahead and play it back one more time at the end here and see what result we've come up with. So overall, not too bad. If I wanted, I could spend a little bit more time perfecting it, but that's the general idea of how you take text and put it behind an object inside of DaVinci Resolve 
It's just a matter of selecting colors and doing power windows. So, that's going to be it for this tutorial. I've been Chris. Hope you guys learned something, and I will see you guys in my future video content.